Hello, today we have the Combro Robo 3018 CNC router. This is one of the most affordable 3018 CNC routers out there. I'll be doing a full review including unboxing, assembly and test on wood as well as acrylic. My Robo CNC arrived in a cardboard box that measured 20 by 13 by 11 and a half inches. This machine weighs around 16 and a half pounds, so it's not so difficult to carry the package in. So let's go ahead and unbox this. I'd like to let you know that Combro sent us this CNC for review, but this video is not sponsored by them. First up, we have the instruction manual with some basic details, some screws, wing nuts and clamps for work holding, screws for assembling the router, a memory stick, card reader and some bits, a USB cable, a set of Allen keys, a little brush, and the power supply unit, the Z probe, uh, the spindle with the ER11 collet attached, an offline controller, three acrylic baffles for the sides, the X axis gantry, and finally the base. Now that we have everything out of the box, let's put this together. First up are the baffles. You have to remove the stickers on them before you install them. You'll need the screws and T-nuts that came in the kit. Make sure you don't lose any of them while opening. Put the screw through the hole on the baffle and place a nut on it. Make sure the protruded end on the nut is facing inwards. You don't have to tighten them all the way in, just enough to keep them there. Now do this for the remaining holes as well. Once you're done, slide the baffle onto the T-slot on the side of the bed and tighten the screws with your hands. Now, do this for the other side as well. Make sure you place it the right way. Next, we'll install the baffle on the back side. For this, you'll need 4 screws. I lost 2 of mine, so I'll go with just 2 screws. I think it should be fine. Once that's done, I use the Allen key to tighten all of the screws. Once the baffles are in place, we'll install the X-axis gantry. For that, you'll need the small screws that came in the kit. Three screws for each side. Pick up the gantry and place it on the platform on the side. There are grooves on the frame and if you place it correctly, it'll stay in place without any screws. Make sure the screw holes are aligned and put in the screws. Now use the Allen key to tighten each screw bit by bit. Do this on both sides and you're good to go. So we have installed the X-axis gantry. Next up, we'll install the spindle. And for doing that, you'll need to loosen the screw on the spindle mount using the Allen key. Once you loosen up the screw, you need to pull the mount open to slide the spindle in. So the best way to do this is to use a screwdriver and pry it open by pushing it into the gap on the mount. And then you can slide the spindle onto the mount. Once the spindle is in its place, use the Allen key to tighten the screw. So that was the mechanical part of the assembly. Next, we move on to the wiring. First, we connect the spindle, take the red wire that says spindle positive and connect it to the terminal next to the red dot on the spindle. Then take the black wire that says spindle negative and connect it to the other terminal. Next, we'll connect the Z limit switches. If you are confused as to which one goes where, the longer one goes to the bottom limit switch and the short one goes to the top. Then we come over to the side and connect the Y axis limit switch. It's just a single connector. And then we move on to the back. We connect the Y axis turbo motor and then the power cable. That's it with the assembly. We have this all assembled. Uh, it took me around 10 minutes to assemble this thing. It's really easy. So with that complete, let's move on to the software setup. So Comro provides Gerbil Candle as the control software for the CNC. To set up the software for this device, you will need the USB cable that came in the kit, the memory card and the card reader. Insert the memory stick in the card reader and plug it into one of the USB ports on your computer. On your computer, open the memory stick and navigate to the folder with the CS340 driver and install it. I suggest you copy all the files on the memory stick onto a folder on your computer so that you will not have to rely on the memory stick each time you want to operate your CNC. Once the driver is installed, connect the CNC with your computer using the USB cable that came with the kit. 
Now, on your computer, press Windows plus R and type in dvmgmd.msc and hit enter. And look for ports and note the COM port number mentioned for the CH340 device. In my case, it's COM port 5. Now, navigate to the folder with Gerbil Candle and open it up. Under status, it would show not connected. Go to settings under services and open it. Select the COM port, for me it's COM5 and click OK. So now it should show idle under status. Now your CNC is connected. If you want to use the auto Z function, you'll need to enter the probe command, open up settings under services again and type in the probe command. Here the 19.24 signifies the height of your Z probe in millimeters. If you have a different probe, you need to enter the height of that one. And the Z05 at the end determines how much the Z axis moves up after touching the probe. I'll leave the probe command in the description, you can copy it from there. Ok, so we are done with the assembly and the software setup. It took me around uh, 20 minutes to complete all of these things. So now let's go ahead and test it. First I'll test the CNC on wood. I've got some pine wood here with me, so let's go to the design. To test this CNC on wood, I'll be making a sign board for mellow pine. The first step is to make the design of the cut you want to do. This is just a simple 2D design. You can use any CAD software you like. I'm using Illustrator for this one. The top half of my design has a big pocket with the letters mellow pine protruding out. So first, I make the rectangle and write mellow pine and remove it from the rectangle. I use rounded fonts here or else it will take forever to cut out the sharp details. The bottom half has CNC cut out from the wood so I just simply place the letters at its space and give a simple design for the corners. An important thing you need to consider while designing is to keep in mind what tool you will be using. I intend to use the 1x8 cutter that came with the kit. If you design rectangles with perfectly square corners, the round cutters won't be able to cut them. So I use rounded rectangle with corners for the outer box with a radius similar to that of the cutting bit, which is 1 by 16 inch in my case. You'll also have to make sure there are no sharp corners which can prevent the tool from passing through. If there are, you need to round them off. Once it's ready, I save it in the SVG format. The CAD design is done and now we need to generate the tool parts. I use Excel by Inventables for generating the G-code as it gives you a lot of options to work with. First, I open a new project in Excel and select the material I want to work with. Then I set the workpiece size which is 4 inch by 8 inch in my case and I'll be using a half inch thick piece of pine. I chose 4 by 8 because if I use anything smaller, there will not be enough space between the letters for the bit to pass through and I will have to use a smaller bit or go for a detailing pass which will increase cutting time drastically. I want to get things done in one go, so my design should allow the 1 by 8 cutter to make all the cuts. Make sure the orientation is correct and import the SVG file you made and align it. You can then click on each part of the design and select to what depth you want to cut them. I set it for 0.1 inches, then I selected the cutting tool I intend to use. Once you select the cutting tool, you can see a preview of the product you will get after cutting. If it doesn't look like the way you want it, you need to modify your design. You can also use Excel for making the design, no issues there, it is easy, it's just about what you prefer. After selecting the cutting tool, you enter the cut settings, click on cut settings and change it to manual. You have to set this based on the machine you are using. So for the robo, I set the feed rate as 5 inches per minute and the depth per pass as 0.05 inches. If you feel this is slow, you can always tweak the speeds and feeds in Gerbil Candle while cutting. You can also change the step over if you want. I used 40% step over for this project. Once you have the settings entered, you can check the simulation if you want or straight away go ahead and download the G code. With that, cam is done. Tool parts have been generated and now we need to open it on Gerbil Candle which is the control software. Since there are cuts to be made near the edges, I cannot mount the workpiece directly using the clamps. I therefore nailed it to a bigger piece of plywood that I had lying around. If you do this, make sure the nails are not deep enough to touch the cutting bit when it cuts through the material. You can also use a bigger workpiece and then cut it into the right size, but I did it this way. Now we need to zero the Z axis. Connect the Z probe and place it on top of the workpiece. Move the spindle so that it's directly over the probe and hit the auto Z button. This will automatically zero the Z axis. Click on the send button to start the engraving. That's it. 
Now we wait for the CNC to finish engraving. So this is what I got at the end of one and a half hours. There are some rough edges but nothing that a bit of sanding can't remove. Truth be told, I wasn't expecting such a good result from a machine in this price range. I am really satisfied with the output. A little bit of staining and some paint and we have a nice little sign. Next up, I want to try the robo on some acrylic. I really like those acrylic LED signs that look like holograms. So on to the designing. I use Illustrator again only because I wanted to use this font. Once I type in the letters, I save it as SVG and then open up Ether. First, we set the workpiece size. I'll go with a 3x6 this time as the spacing between the letters does not matter as it did in the case of the wood sign. I'm using 5mm clear cast acrylic for this one. Once I have the workpiece configured, I import the SVG that I made on Illustrator and place it on the work area and add some design from the Easter library. Then I go to the cut settings and set the cutting depth for all the designs. I will be using the engraving bit with a 0.1mm tape and 20 degrees taper. So I figure if I go about 0.02 inches deep on the cut, it should be wide enough to be visible. Now here is one important detail you shouldn't forget. You need to set it to cut only along the edges of the design and not the entire design. If you don't do this, it will take forever to engrave the design using the 0.1mm tipped bit. For cut settings, I'm going with 5 inches per minute and 0.02 inch depth per cut. We can now download the G-code and load it onto Global Candle. Once all the three axes are zeroed, I let the program run. All that engraving took around 20 minutes to complete and it looks really great. So this is a 3018 CNC, which means it has a work area of 30 cm by 18 cm. But unlike most other 3018 CNCs out there, this one is longer toward the Y axis than the X axis. So if you want to cut a 9x5 workpiece, you'll have to turn the design by 90 degrees to accommodate it within the cut area. For work holding, they have provided this T-slotted aluminum bed along with some clamps, screws and wing nuts. The chassis or the frame of the CNC is entirely made of aluminum. During my test, I pushed it beyond the recommended feed rates and it did hold its ground. But there were some vibrations when I tried cutting hardwood at speeds and feed beyond the recommended limits. Most of the parts are metallic but there are some ABS plastic parts as well like the spindle mount, Z-axis gantry and the bearing housing. But that doesn't compromise the performance. There are hand wheels on the front and on the side. You can use this for moving the X and Y axis gantries manually. There is no hand wheel for the Z-axis though. It would have been nice to have one for the Z-axis as well. Looking at the linear motion of the gantries, all of the axes use a leaf screw drive paired with NEMA 17 stepper motors. If I try to move the gantry with my hand, it won't move. If this was a bell drive, it would have moved. This thing won't move unless I turn the lead screw. The feed rates are good enough for small hobby projects. Then you have the spindle. So this one here is a normal 775 type spindle that you see on most 3018 CNC's. The spindle is mounted onto the Z-axis gantry using a spindle mount made of ABS plastic. It's directly controlled by the control board behind here and has a maximum RPM of 10,000. This is enough for most engraving jobs. However, if you really want to make deep cuts on materials, you'll need a spindle upgrade. The spindle uses an ER11 collet which means you can work with 1x8 inch bits and they provide one ER collet with the kit. And yes, they provide 8 bits in a small box, 4 of them are 4 fluid 1 by 8 inch cutting bit and 4 of them are for engraving. The engraving bits have a 0.1 mm tip and 20 degree taper. This thing can engrave on most soft materials like acrylic, softwood, hardwood, MDF, bakelite and plastics. Coming to the other aspects, it has limit switches on all 3 axes. These are contact type switches and place pretty open. It's a good idea to blow air or run a brush through it occasionally to keep it clean. There is a red emergency switch at the front to stop the machine immediately if you run into some problems. The wirings are neat and tied together. They even provide a wire holding clamp with double sided tape on it. You can use it to tie down any of the cables. I use it to tie down the power cable at the back. 
The controller is placed inside a black enclosure at the back of the X-axis gantry. It uses a 32-bit microcontroller flashed with gerbil. There is also a little fan on the enclosure to keep things cool inside the controller. This controller allows you to use an offline controller to control the CNC. It's a really nice feature. You can load G codes onto a memory stick and use the offline control to run them without connecting the CNC to a computer. If you want to use the offline controller, unplug the CNC from your computer and then connect the controller to the CNC. Make sure you don't connect them both at the same time. And one thing I found a bit hard is finding the connector for the Z probe. It's just a small wire poking out from the controller on the right side if you are looking at it from behind. So on the softer side, this thing works with Gerbil Candle and I have used it. There were no issues. I have heard that it also works with Easel, but I'm yet to try it. I have used Easel to generate the G code for this, but I didn't try controlling it with Easel. You can also use the offline controller. You can jog the machine and run G codes directly off a memory stick. If you are new to CNCs, I suggest you stick with Gerbil Candle for a while till you learn everything about this machine. Using the offline controller is really convenient, but it lacks the level of control that Candle can offer. Talking about upgrades, you can convert your Robo CNC to a laser engraver by getting the laser module. It's also available on Amazon. There is also a rotary roller upgrade that you can get if you want to laser engrave on cylindrical pieces like a soda can. I'll leave a link to both of these products in the description. Talking about customer support, I had contacted Combro a few times now and they were really responsive and helpful. They offer a 30 day return policy, so if you are not satisfied, you can get a refund. They do not have an official forum, but they do have an official Facebook group where you can ask your questions. Coming to the assembly part, this CNC comes as two separate assemble part that you need to put together. It will take you around 30 minutes to unbox, assemble and configure it with your PC. Overall, Combro Robo CNC is a good product for its price. I would recommend this for beginners and hobbyists for its price as well as for its simplicity in operation. So that's it guys about the Combro Robo CNC. It's a fine CNC priced very affordably. It does great for engraving and it can do some light routing on soft materials. So that's about it. For more interesting stuff on CNCs, stay subscribed and also visit mellopine.com cnc. See you next time.